All right, let's check and see if lock button undoes the windows. Ooh, ah, yes, it does. Wow. There are Tucson, 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 three Tucson in a row. And look at this, the transmission. Welcome to Car Scene Korea. I introduce you newly released Genesis Hyundai and Kia cars. And today is the last day of me test driving this 2025 Hyundai Tucson facelift. Number one selling car of Hyundai in the United States and mostly throughout the world global sales. I am test driving the facelift model. Well, there casually is a pre-facelift model going right next to me. And it's not really all that difficult to meet another Tucson on the streets. We will see more Tucson for sure throughout our test drive. Well, first and foremost, go check out my first review test drive that I posted on the first day of driving this vehicle. And this is rather a brand new format on my channel. I would like to have that raw, instant feedback, review thoughts on the car the moment I received the car. Of course, throughout the course of the test drive, put in some mileage and having spent the time, things are going to differ and change. For your information, I have test driven this vehicle over 300 kilometers. On an average, I managed to get 8.9 kilometers per liter. Just like on all of my test drives I do, it is with excessive stops and starts launch controls if it comes with the such tech well this car doesn't a lot of spirited driving on toge kenyan runs um backcountry roads you name it so having that said uh, that is a bit of an introduction of today's episode and there are a whole lot more videos with this facelift tucson well first and foremost the first test drive the first impression video that i just told you about a side-by-side -side comparison with this facelift tucson to that of an all-new santa fe not because i want to compare the car to figure out which is better we all know santa fe is bigger brother car of this Tucson but it's because those two are actually the latest SUVs from Hyundai and I know there will be people who have split opinions about which car to go with put aside the money factory and after that I also have managed to film a side-by-side -side comparison of this Tucson to that of the preface lift model there's one more a side-by-side -side comparison with the Sportage I also have filmed a night drive because this facelift Tucson has gotten the intelligence intelligent headlight. It's the first time ever from Hyundai car in this segment and the class that came with such tech. It was only found on Genesis level. They're more delicate, I would say. This Tucson certainly does get the job done, no problem. So wait for that. That video is certainly coming up. Maybe it would have already come up before this video. Please, please do check it out. And I'm definitely inserting that B-roll right now. It has done an amazing job. It would actually turn on and off according to the oncoming traffic and of course the road condition and all it definitely is one remarkable tech to have especially when you're driving around on pitch black night times wow that was a long introduction that is how much fun i had with this tucson so do keep that in mind and just like that there's the all new Hyundai santa fe santa fe tucson also are one of the best selling cars here in korea as well along with Kia sportage and Sorento in Gia family and just like that there's the face lifted Sorrento on the right as well well it would be quite interesting if you could actually timestamp in the comment if you see a Tucson let's do that because what this is the fourth generation Tucson a car of four generations you know you are going to see a lot of them on the streets I still do recall driving around in my friends um, second generation Tucson back in college so there's the Tucson second gen so having said that Hyundai certainly has come a very very long way before I deviate to too much more than I have already let me tell you about that overall summary if you will of test driving this Tucson facelift I would like to focus on three things that is the noise the drive the comfort and that is actually what I have um, done with all new Santa Fe test drive video 
and wow on the left there is the kona n we're seeing like a, that's like a unicorn and it's also in a sonic blue color it's just an amazing color oh wow the third brake light it's triangular that also shows means it's n and of even a glance of it i know ends i can smell ends <laughs> well you know what let's put the car into sport mode try to pick it up and this is of course i i will be mentioning this a lot throughout today's video and i already have that is it's the seven speed dry dct that this car comes with the car does come with a seven speed dry dct dual clutch transmission there is a huge difference between the seven speed dry dct versus the eight speed wet dct that Hyundai motor group offers which that kona n had which my veloster n that i used to own had the word dry and wet it means that there is the fluid inside the transmission case or not i don't know if you're gonna believe me but i couldn't really believe the fact that this car is just under 200 horsepower however thanks to the dry dct the car actually melts every drop of that last power from the engine delivers right back to the driver i could feel all of that throughout my test drive it has been nothing but a joy to drive around with this car even in cities where it is known to be most vulnerable when it comes to the driving comfort of that seven speed dct i would like to wrap it up that way and my first impression also goes along with what i have stated at the start of the test drive that is it feels very different from my daily driver Kia seltos that also has the identical seven speed dry dct i don't know what Honda has done with this facelift tucson but it is much more softer smoother and it works far better and I mean like everything all together with the engine and the transmission and also the HDA highway driving assist or ADOS the driving aid that Hyundai Motor Group offers it just works far better than it does on my daily driver Kia Seltos most of the times it's quite subtle but there is always a fine tune upgrades updates when it comes to both inside out meaning the hardware and software of a vehicle especially especially when the car is face lifted and this tucson precisely has done that it actually has done a great job with that so that was my thoughts on the dct and you can probably see how the car is responding in this traffic jam rush hour here in korea i could also definitely feel a huge difference between the sport mode normal mode and eco mode in sport mode the rpm does get raised a little bit allowing the engine note to come into the cabin a little more but with that what you get is a much more responsive engine and transmission engagement feeling delivered through your steering wheel the car does not come with adaptive suspension it is not air suspension or it does not have any ecs electronically controlled suspension the suspension setup is the same regardless of the drive mode you have the sport mode certainly does make the car behave differently both using the engine and transmission so that was the sport mode a normal mode it does drive and feel like any other Hyundai cars in normal mode it has adequate response it has adequate mpg all around a just a very comfortable setting to drive around in cities as well as the freeway and everything put together but when i had the eco mode and started driving around in cities eco mode was really conservative about using the engine and hitting on the gas pedal when i actually had the hda on the car in the front started moving in the eco mode i sometimes ended up hitting on the accelerator pedal because the car just wouldn't pick up the speed fyi the settings i told you about in terms of the reaction time i set it to the quickest earliest most responsive highest maximum i like my car to be responsive even with that eco mode was really conservative about moving the car forward so do keep that in mind as I told you at the start of today's video, throughout the course of driving it over 300 kilometers, I managed to clock 8.9 kilometers per liter, but that figure would easily go up 
into 10, 12, 11. With the nature of the seven speed dry DCT, if you put the car on a freeway, you will easily see above 15 kilometers per liter. If not, I think you will see somewhere around even 20s if you actually can manage to get one because I easily see that number on my Gia Seltos as well. I doubt that Tucson wouldn't see it thanks to the transmission it has. So I failed to put this car on a freeway this time and that is one of the excuses. And if you've been following and watching my previous channel, I always get lower MPG than what is actually stated. I guess I am test driving my car to best of my ability after all. That is pretty much about the drive. I do want to mention about the projection type headlamp that also came with the intelligent headlights. What else is there for me to say? Let me just show it to you right now. So this is the power of the editing. As you saw, when there is the oncoming traffic, I mean, we all know what intelligent headlights do, all automatic. So turn your light on, put it on auto mode, push the lever forward, the intelligent headlight will engage. It will turn on and off the high beam accordingly to the road condition. I'm talking about the drive of this 2025 Hyundai Tucson facelift. Then I have to talk about the seats. It is one of the most comfortable seats I would say that does not come with a gimmicks or special touch to it. Yes, I'm talking about their Ergo Motion seat that Hyundai Motor Group provides. The all new Santa Fe got the Ergo Motion seat and all of Genesis cars as we know. Don't get me wrong, that Ergo Motion seat is one of my personal favorite. I always slap on that button three times every time I hop in my driver's seat in order to get the whole body Ergo Motion seat going on. For your information, Hyundai does not call it a massage seat. It's more like a relaxing seat. Put that aside, Tucson does not come with the Ergo Motion seat. It just has a plain seat, a leather seat. But the overall feeling of sitting on top of this leather seat was really pleasant. Never once did I get any back pain or felt a bit of a clumsy sitting position. I really like the height that it provides from the ground up. I have the older version Santa Fe in front of me, but the line of sight I am getting inside the cabin isn't all that really low compared to the vehicle that I have in front of me. Well, comparing it to an all new Santa Fe, it's certainly higher and larger that car is. The line of sight certainly does play a key role when it comes to a driving experience and sensation you get. Clear line of sight, high line of sight, always a pleasure to have. And that is one of the biggest reasons why there are people favoring SUVs over a sedan. All right, so pick it up the speed. Finally, a bit of a traffic jam is gone. Can't believe that this is just a slightly under 200 horsepower engine, thanks to the DCT, I must really say. And also, you can see it on the display right now. The car does come with blind spot view monitor. Use the turn signal to the direction you wanna go. It will show you the display using that little tiny circle. Let's kind of talk about the comfort now. Um, the HDA, it still uses the same good old HDA1 because there is the HDA2 in the market which does a fabulous job, upgraded job as to how it performs on tight corners like the one that we just saw. I do have the test drive video on it using all new Santa Fe so feel free to check it out. It is the same HDA1 that my Seltos has however it just feels different. The HDA, the TCU as I have told you they've made different upgrades. It just behaves differently. It could be the TCU update, it could be the software, and also the hardware. Of course, the, it's different cars. It weighs different, the size is different, so it's got to be altered. It will be different from that of my Seltos. I do like how this facelift to some behaves with the HDA. Clear line of sight, high line of sight, driving pleasure comes from that as well. The suspension is very adequately fit to the car, I would like to say. Speaking of the seats, I don't think I've mentioned about the seat's comfort specifically throughout test driving many vehicles. I was like, hey, this seat is 
really comfortable. I mean, I've been driving around for some time now. It's not too stiff, not too comfy. It's not that cushiony. It's not the Napa leather seat like Genesis gets. But still, leather seats that Tucson gets is quite comfortable. I don't know how better to put it. It just felt comfortable as I was just test driving. It struck me in the middle of my test drive. Most of the cars are just comfortable. Yeah, they're okay. They don't really stand out all that much from other seats per se. I don't really comment on the seats because of that. There's some Tucson facelift. It is definitely worth mentioning. And Will comes with the two memory button seats so you could actually easily switch around different drivers with your wife, a family member. Also adding on to the drive is this gigantic panoramic sunroof that I've mentioned a couple of times already. I do like lights coming through the roof, coming into the cabin. That is one of the reasons why I mostly have the wide sunroof curtain off. And of course, I do need lighting to get the best shots possible. Tucson's panoramic sunroof, the wide panoramic sunroof is truly wide so it is the noise drive and comfort that i am covering so we started off with the drive talked all about the dct and comfort somewhat what else am i missing so the latest tech hda1 would have been better if it was two hda2 but hda1 and two there isn't much of a difference except for the corners and turns on a straight line, ones and two, they behave almost nearly identical. You wouldn't really be able to pinpoint the differences. For the first time ever on a Tucson, there is the HUD head-up display. It's not a combiner type. It projects right onto the screen. So this has the HUD slot, if you will, the ones that we've been seeing throughout the car. I did actually do a rough measurement using my hand when I was comparing it to the all-new Santa Fe. They are almost about the same same size but I'm not 100% sure about it the UI the user interface on the HUD is essentially the same it's going on and off it's the flicker of course it is solid to human eyes and as you saw it does display a lot of information there if you use the car's navigation it's associated with that shows you all the information about the hda you're using the traffic exit you need to take etc that is definitely a plus to have you know hud never hurts and of course it's for an extra you do have to include it when you get the highest trend possible. So it does not come standard. Do keep that in mind though. Does come with 360 view cam, which is a lifesaver. You don't have to open up a door to see if it's perfectly aligned to the parking lots, the lines and all. And also when you are going into the tight corners and turns, that will automatically turn on using the reading it off from the sensors. So it really also does help with your driving aid it truly is a driving aid and let's move on to the last point of the day noise with noise i can just simply walk through nvh which stands for noise vibration and harshness first and foremost tucson only had acoustic glasses on the windshield the front windshield up until now come facelift tucson also gets dual laminated acoustic glasses on the first row seats found on both the driver's seat and the passenger seat it is yet to be applied for the second row seats but if you want that you gotta go with the all-new Santa Fe. Although it's only applied on the first row seats, it does make a huge difference. I'm not going to give you that decibel readings and measurements because it is subject to so much difference because it can never be measured under a same condition. It could be different depending on the road condition, your tire wear and tear, and also maybe the other noise happening around the roads and all. I just simply don't do that. Throughout the course of test driving the vehicle, you know, you can feel this acoustic glasses because Hyundai does a fabulous job with that and I would strongly recommend that you get a car that does have the acoustic glasses and there we go on the left is the Kia Sportage the latest one from Kia and I do have a side-by-side -side comparison with that car too so feel free to check it out Tucson facelift does also get eight 
airbags throughout, which means it's enhanced, upgraded safety for driver and passengers inside the vehicle. The test driver comes with the 19 inch wheels and tires. So I think if you get the 18 and you can also go all the way down to 17 inch wheels and tires. Well, thank you very much Hyundai. <laughs> the cars these days are just outrageous. The wheels are just so much bigger. Like if for a Genesis, there's even a 22 inch wheels now. When the wheels are bigger, it means it has the thinner tire because with a bigger wheel, you get the thinner profile or the sidewall of a tire which means there is less room for the tires to absorb the shock the impact and also the noise delivered to the cabin which also adds on to overall driving pleasure and experience of of the vehicle it would certainly feel different when you get the smaller wheels and tires um 17 that could be a little too small because you know bigger the wheel it looks better that is one of the, the ultimate reason why manufacturers are giving us the big size wheel nowadays because it's found that the customers do pay a lot of attention to the wheels when they're making the purchase decision but thanks to this Tucson Hyundai gave us the choices varying from the 17s all the way to 19s so go along with your personal preference be it the design be it the practicality the performance or the vehicle dynamics you name it but personally I would go with the 18s I think 18 sits right in between literally 17 and 19 so it has has the looks and it has the performance at the same time too also along with the noise Tucson gets upgraded sound absorbers all throughout of course it's subtle it's not that visible but underliner underneath the wheelhouse the materials the fabrics used in this facelift Tucson has been upgraded in terms of the size it's got wider and bigger therefore it will absorb more noise that gets delivered to the cabin let's move on to to vibration now so it literally means how much the car vibrates of course it adds on to it gets directly translated into your overall experience of driving or being inside a vehicle let me say it one more time as for the suspension of this Tucson facelift I really do like it it's very fit for city urban drives and cars you know there are SUVs that are truly made for the off-road and most of the SUVs we know are made and geared and targeted for city drives which this Tucson is it just is perfectly tuned and adequately fit some of the roads are not the best ones in the world here in Korea as well there are potholes it's not always asphalt some of the roads are cements there are a lot of underground parking lot structure here in Korea you know what I mean if you've been here before the suspension is just a beautiful a charm to enjoy and look at this the transmission just hit on the gas as you can see the car will deliver it will give you the power that you need and that you seek it's a pleasure to drive around in cities just like this I honestly have nothing to complain about when it comes to the suspension it just gets the job done perfect suspension is static it does not vary or change it is there so it's the same suspension regardless of the drive modes different drive modes does deliver and give you a different feel definitely not on that stiff level the suspension does a beautiful job of canceling and getting rid of unwanted vibration movement delivered to the driver i i genuinely do like it and last point when it comes to the comfort of the vehicle out of the NVH that I told you about the harshness but I think I did have recapped and went over the overall experience of the harshness and I have mentioned it on multiple times here and there throughout the test drive the vehicle there are Tucson 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 three Tucson in a row let me wrap up today's video by answering the questions that you guys gave me in the community post FYI I do read and go through all the comments you guys give me on my community post and I it really does help me create the content and videos by just answering the questions that you guys have about the car so I thank you very much for that I mean it I would like to also encourage you to drop more questions in the posts I can reach the video and tell you more about it all right so now is the Q&A time first and foremost thank you very much for dropping 
the comments. So is the door soft touch plastic on the second row or is it all hard touch plastic? Well, I'll find out right now. There is no plastic on this trim. So there is the leather on the armrest portion. The top portion, you can probably hear right now, it is plastic, but the armrest is leather and the piano black, the high gloss finish. The rest of the pockets is made of the plastic. And of course, it goes the same thing for the driver's seat as well. The combination is the same for the driver's seat. Next question, could you cover there will be any update on the headlights? I went all big with the headlights. I told you and have shown you all about it. So there is the projection headlight right here. There is no more Halligan headlights, the yellow light bulbs on this facelift Tucson anymore, regardless of the trim you get. However, the intelligent headlights that gets the projection headlights are actually for extra. The performance it has, it delivers, I have shown you. It is just amazing. I now I'm including the footage right now once again. So it really does make a day and night difference, literally. <laughs> current model headlights are not its strong side for sure at least the full led on the european model so there is not the matrix pattern turn signal nor headlights for the time being the hybrid system will they be the same um, the hybrid fyi it actually has five horsepower extra compared to the preface lift model because the motor is five horsepower stronger than the preface lift model unfortunately there is no hybrid test driver available yet i will test drive the hybrid as soon as possible and show you what the updates has been made as i just told you five horsepower increase therefore the overall output also has increased five horsepower from the preface lift model and curious about the audio system oh, it's not the best one in the market i would say it doesn't have that strong crazy boosted bass but again um nothing that bothers me i'm not an audio guy to be honest that is one of the reasons why i don't really go through the speakers in my review regardless of the car but since you gave me a question about it i think it's adequately fit to the fact that this is a tucson you know it's not a genesis it's not the premium car that we are driving but it does get the job done i am perfectly fine with the speaker output that it was giving me so long as there's a bit of a bass that that i can enjoy with my music it's all done deal for me i don't think i see that much of an intensive crazy twitter I mean, there is a Twitter right here, right next to the side mirror, but it is a Bose premium sound system, by the way. Oh, so it was the Krell for the US model, huh? Was it? It was always like Bose for Hyundai here in Korea. I didn't know about that. The facelift still does get the Bose as I just showed you. And the next question was about the regen brake on the hybrid. Unfortunately, I don't have the car yet, so I will test drive it. I will try to get back to you on this as soon as possible. The next one, headlights will have the adaptive option, the matrix one. So. I just told you about the projection, the intelligent headlight system. I think it is one of the best one that out of all the facelift um, text that we got on the car, don't you think? And uh, is there a digital center mirror? No, so un unfortunately not. So it seems like the bottom line for the digital center mirror is Santa Fe. However, the car does come with the onboard camera 2.0. So there are the onboard cameras running 24 7 front and rear the beauty about that this comes from the manufacturer which means it's covered under warranty last thing i want on my car is installing third-party electronics someone mentioned about the ambient light not being too strong it's not super bright it's not too dark either but you could adjust all that in your settings so i mean it's not those like german car like crazy super bright ambient lights Hyundai does not do that just yet i hope that that answers your question i hope they have upgraded the headlamps lumens um, fortunately i don't have the physical numbers with me due to the constraints i have i have very limited resource running the channel on my own so please bear with me hopefully that intelligent headlight is something that you're looking for could you share how the braking force is like stopping at 60 miles per hour? The brake was really pleasant. It's not super strong at an initial bite. Hyundai has deviated a lot from that. That's why Hyundai used to be about a decade ago. They actually had super crazy strong initial bite at first. Meaning if you just step on the foot brake, it will immediately just stop the car. But no, it does provide that linear feedback. I 
don't know if Tucson got it, but Kona, all new Kona actually got the upgraded the hydro backs on the foot brake. So it can provide and give you more linear foot brake feedback, which is really pleasant for driver. It could be a personal preference, but I really do like that linear feedback that I get from the foot brake. And I did get similar feedback from Tucson. I had no issue with uh, foot brake operation, the feedback that I got from it whatsoever. So fingerprint scanner, unfortunately, I could not test it out because it's a test driver. You need to set things up in order to get that going, but it is the essentially identical ones we've been getting thus far from the Hyundai cars, including um, Sonata, such uh, all those cars. So it should just work fine and essentially the same. Okay. Oh, this I really wanted to test out when I saw the question. Tucson have automatic window close feature via car key. Let's check that out right now. Turn this car off. It's locked moment of truth the latest key fob design Hyundai has been giving us right so moment of truth locked it unlock it oh windows do go down all of them even the second row seat I didn't know Tucson's do that does Tucson preface lift also do this well, thanks for the question. I didn't know Tucson can do this. All right, so it rolls the windows down. All right, let's check and see if lock button undoes the windows. Ooh, ah, yes, it does. Wow. Wow. So that is like a cool feature that only a coupe cars used to get. Boy, as you're seeing it, Tucson gets it too. Oh, wow. And you know, you can start your car just like that all right well that's it for today's video thank you very much for watching car scene korea and if you have been watching this far thank you very much do not forget to subscribe and like car scene korea and i will see you in the next video this tucson definitely living up to the name tucson if you do have more questions after watching today's video feel free to drop it in the comment below i will definitely come up with the hybrid tucson test drive and i'll try to cover more of your questions over there i'll meet you in the next video bye bye